Hey guys, I'm Justin Walter, and joining me is my fellow Explore This Partner in Crime, Kinga Phillips. And today, you know, Kinga, every time I check social media, you are in a new tropical destination. You are always swimming, you are always in paradise. And recently, you were in the island of Turks and Caicos. Was that your first time in Turks and Caicos, or had you been there before? That was my first time in Turks and Caicos, and I'm super excited because I actually got to share it with you. Yes, and we're there together. We had so much fun, and I'm so excited to recount the magic because that place is truly magical. So, in a big picture overview, you've gone all around the world to beautiful tropical destinations. How does Turks and Caicos compare to where you've been in the past? Well, I gotta say that the water of Grace Bay and Turks and Caicos is uncanny. It's yes. almost difficult to look at it because it hurts your eyes because you're like, how is this real? It is shades of turquoise, aquamarine, blue, crystal clear, just magic crystal ball colors like I've never seen before. It's a stunning place. Yeah, there was one point where we were walking down the beach, I felt like we were walking through a real life screensaver. <laughs> it's it's yes. insane, right? Yeah. So let's talk about adventure. I know both of us and we like to explore and travel. We always seek out adventure. So big picture, did you link up with anybody? Who did you go and do a lot of adventure with and what kind of adventures did you do? Yes, actually Big Blue Collective, perfectly named, was our adventure outfitter. And I'm always so particular about seeking out adventure outfitters that have the ethos of the ocean and conservation and are environmentally conscious and they are all of that. On top of that, they have the best boats in the islands. They <laughs> are so fun. You can go out scuba diving with them. You can take their kayaks out to the mangroves. You can take out their stand-up paddle boards and just play all day long. Yeah! Come on! Oh. Their staff is amazing and professional. They are so much fun. And I mean, you know, because yeah. we went in the water there, those reefs are stunning. Insane. Some of the healthiest I've seen. And that's honestly what put Turks and Caicos on the map is scuba divers discovered it in the early 2000s as far as a tourist destination yeah. and started getting out there to really experience that from turtles to reef sharks to bigger sharks to just those healthy, incredible reefs. I mean, to me, that's that's underwater magic. How does it compare to scuba diving locations that you've been to around the world? I think it's great because to me, seeing healthy reefs like that warms my heart because that's honestly not the case in a lot of destinations around the world. So seeing so much coral, so much life, so many reef fish, and of course, you know I love sharks, <laughs> and the fact <laughs> abundance of Caribbean reef sharks there that really speaks to that being a healthy environment, healthy biomass. It just, it thrills me. I only saw one lionfish, which I don't <laughs> like, they're invasive species, but yeah. otherwise it was healthy and beautiful. And I love the drop-offs where you yeah. have a coral ridge and then you have that amazing drop-off and that's where the sharks love to hang out too. Yeah, in addition to scuba diving, the two of us had an opportunity to go snorkeling with one of our local friends, Judy, who took us out to a secret spot and destination. And we ran into so many turtles. Have you ever done a snorkeling or a swim like that we had uh, with all those turtles before? I don't think I've ever seen that many sea turtles in one location. And yeah. speaking of Judy, who is incredible, Linking up with a local and getting mm. a local perspective on any destination is always going to give you the kind of insight that you just can't get from a guidebook. Yeah. And Judy took us to her secret beach and took us in the water. And I have some amazing footage of you with <laughs> honestly, like it looks photoshopped, crystal clear Good. water, and these gorgeous sea turtles swimming around and chomping on the seagrass, their favorite snack. And you're just there with them. It's it, it was phenomenal. It was amazing. And how many sea turtles do you think we saw? I I, I can't even keep counting of how many we probably saw in one time. <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. It was it was 100% upwards of 10, and they yeah. had huge remoras attached to them, and they were just completely oblivious to our presence there. They would be eating <laughs> their seagrass, and we'd swim by, and they'd be like, you want, you want some seagrass, guys? Let's talk about kayaking. How was the kayaking in the mangroves for you? Oh, that was super fun. So we rented that kayak with the two of us in it, with yeah. front back, and it even had a rudder, which was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
We took it across the way and went into the mangroves. And mangroves for me are one of my favorite habitats because they are just a place of nursery for a lot of fish, sharks, animals. We saw turtles in there as well. And you're just basically following these amazing channels through the mangroves and looking around at the abundance of life. And like you said, Big Blue Collective is an amazing company to do all this exploration with. So we both would highly recommend teaming up with them and say hi to Phil for us. <laughs> So let's move into food. You know, when we go to different destinations, food is always something at the top of our list to explore. Did you have any favorite spots for food? I'm licking my lips as you say that. The food <laughs> is fantastic. And I think we both probably have our favorite spots. Mine was Coco Van. Remember, I kept going, Justin, let's go back there. Justin, come on, let's go back yeah. there. Back there. They had this tuna tartare and crispy rice that every time I think about it, I, I feel like I'm gonna drool. Tartar, it was so delicious. Right. All of their food was great. And because it's such a beautiful location, you wanna be outdoors. And this is essentially an airstream outside and you can just walk up, order your food, they bring it to you. And you and I sat there and played games for hours. So that yeah. that was my pick. What was yours? It was, well, it was a good environment for, like you said, an outdoor environment and it had tasty food. and. I've never seen you eat something so quickly in my life before. <laughs> you devoured that meal and you were, you, I think you, you wanted more and you just kept saying, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back, uh, which was amazing. You know, one of the fun spots we went to that I enjoyed was the Conch Shack, another outdoor environment. And, you know, it was just a cool on the beach location. The food was delicious. And, and you know, when we talk about Conch, I know you want to share kind of a little bit about what's the kind of backstory and the conservation element to eating conch on an island like that. I think that's a great thing to bring up. So conch is basically a mollusk that comes out of this really large, beautiful shell, and it's a, it becomes a popular dish in most Caribbean areas. However, the problem is that the conch fishing is unsustainable because they're not farmed, they're taken wild. And eventually, if you have enough tourists coming in and eating the conch, you're gonna deplete the population. Yeah. And these guys are so cool. I remember when we were diving around, you could see their trails in the sand and they release pheromones and that's how they find each other to mate. Yeah. But you know, a, a creature in a shell isn't that fast. So if they're not plenty of them around, they can't find each other. So as the population gets depleted, you get less and less and less of them. So the Kong Shack is amazing, but there are other things on the menu like shrimp and fish that were phenomenal. Yeah. And I, my recommendation would be to pass on the conch in places like that, just to let those populations recover and for us not to continue to deplete them. Always the conservation side of things. I love that about you, where you can explore a location and a destination, but then look at it from that perspective. And it's important for travelers to have that in mind when going to locations like Turks and Caicos and other Caribbean islands or anywhere in the world. You know, we've covered adventure, we've covered food. So what was your lodging in Turks and Caicos? And would you recommend it? Well, we stayed at the Waimara Resort and Spa, which is stunning right there on Grace Bay, which is one of the most beautiful beaches, I think, in the world. As a matter of fact, I know it's written up as one of the most gorgeous beaches in the world. Yeah. And Waimara's tagline is, yes, it really is that blue. And the reason they say that is because when their marketing materials go out, people often go, did you Photoshop that? <laughs> really that blue? And yes, it really is that blue. We can attest to that. Yeah. And it is, it's gorgeous. The room I had was right there, open up to the beach. I walk out on my balcony and then just wander into the sand and float around in the water. They have a gorgeous spa, delicious food, multiple restaurants, good drinks. It's a gorgeous spot in location, 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 the best location in Turks and Caicos. It is a, a boutique, you know, resort with, and they have villa options as well that it makes you feel like you're treating yourself to this high class, high end r resort and hotel that like you said, the beach is impeccable, remarkable. It's gorgeous and beautiful. There's other options. There's Airbnbs. And, you know, I actually had the opportunity to stay at a, a place called Liquid Villa. And it was this Liquid. gorgeous villa right on the canal near the Big Blue Collective that I had. I stayed for one night. <laughs> and uh, it was just like I was in an episode of Cribs. I was blown away by how cool that was as an alternative option to a hotel. I also stayed in you know, an Airbnb. We stayed in one together for a while. So there are, you know, less expensive than luxury hotel options, which I think is always important if you're looking to go on a budget. But speaking of on a budget, you know, Turks and Caicos isn't necessarily, 
you know, the most budget friendly destination. So what tips would you give to somebody who's looking to go there, but doesn't want to break the bank in order to do that? You know, you're right. Turks and Caicos is a high-end destination. It is not an inexpensive destination, but anywhere you go, you can make it work on a budget if you want to. And I think you said it, I think looking for deals for hotels is always a great option. Maybe going shoulder season instead of high season. And then you have the Airbnbs, the villas, splitting it with friends is always a great option. Yeah. So whatever your budget is, budget it out for the day. And then, and then you know, work within that. Taxis are very expensive there. Maybe renting a car is a better option. Again, especially if you're splitting it with a lot of people. And then make sure that you factor in and budget in what is most important to you. So if you want to go scuba diving, maybe you know eat at the beach shacks, but spend your money on scuba diving. So prioritize that list and you can make it work. Always such good advice and insights into destinations all over the world. I love exploring this and exploring the world with you, Kinga. Thank you for sharing all your insights on Turks and Caicos, and I can't wait for us to hit up another destination together. And we absolutely will. So yeah. thank you, everyone. Explore yeah. this. <laughs>